What's going on everybody? My name is Marco here with Marco's Tech Talk and today I'm going to be unboxing a dash cam. It's a little bit different for the channel. I haven't done one of those before but uh, I already have one of these things and I already really like it so I decided to buy a second one. This one's actually going to be for the back of my car just because I kind of feel like you know these things are so cheap and I've seen so many videos online of like dash cam compilations and stuff like that and being that they're so cheap and they have the potential to be so helpful in a situation where you may need one um, that, you know, it's kind of, to me, kind of really important just to get one. It's kind of like, they're so cheap, might as well just get one, you know? So, uh, see, so yeah, as you guys just saw, this is the camera here. Um, it's by a company called Cross Tour. Um, I'll have a link in the description to where I bought it from on Amazon. It's a really, really, really cheap uh, $40 camera. This one in particular is the Car Recorder CR300 and all that good stuff there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much what it's about there. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get right into the unboxing. Alright guys, so here's the box. I already kind of went over this before, but I'll just show you guys again. It's the uh, Cross Tour Car Recorder CR300. It shoots in full 1080p, sorry for the shadow there. It's got a 170 degree uh, wide viewing angle. It's got a 3 inch LCD on it, and it has motion detection. Not really sure how that kind of plays a part in here, uh, being that, like, you know, you're driving already. So, yeah. It has a shock sensor in it. That, that might actually be more for, like, leaving it in parking lots and all that, which is probably not a bad idea. Um, since you're gonna have it anyway, but at the same time I'd be kind of concerned that uh, you know people would see a camera and then try to steal it for whatever reason uh, Yeah, so anyway, it's got it shoots in 1080p and 720p. It's got, it also takes pictures too, a 12 megapixel and uh, You know, it's pretty good. It says it supports up to a 32 gigabyte SSD. I'm sorry an SD card I actually put a 64 gigabyte in mine I actually have the new one right here because like I said I already actually have one of these cameras that I'm using for the front of my car, but I figured I might as well get a rear one because again, they're just so cheap that it's kind of like, why not get one? It could save you in the long run. So um, like I said, I've been using the 64 gig in mine. Um, it does work in mine. Maybe this one will be different, I'm not sure. I unfortunately already threw the box away the old one. So I have no idea if, you know, it might've changed, but it was I literally bought them like a week and a half, two weeks apart. So unless the stock is older or newer, it really shouldn't affect anything. Um, maybe it doesn't utilize the whole 64 gigs, that could be it, but this was only $4 more than a 32, so I was like, why not double it? Um, so alright, so let's go ahead and actually open this guy up here. If I can remember how... Okay, yeah. So we pull on this right down here, and then kind of fold this open. Might have said it earlier, I will uh, go ahead and put a link in the description below to uh, this particular camera here. Uh, inside it says, thank you for choosing Cross Tour. And then we've got just some, uh, like, I guess, I don't know, contact support. And then some instructions here on how to deal with this guy, set it up and all that. Uh, all that good stuff there. I haven't really had to refer to that at all while using mine. Maybe I did in the beginning, like, once, but not for anything crazy, I don't think. I'll walk you guys through kind of how to set this up, too, at least, at least the way I set it up. Because it is super easy to do. So this is all the stuff inside the box. The box is now empty. So in here we're going to have the accessories. It does come with some pretty nifty accessories, especially for the $40 price tag. Um, we're going to go ahead and open this up. So it comes with this cable right here, which is a very short, maybe foot, if that, uh, mini USB cable. I know we haven't been seeing these in quite a while on Tech's products. Usually it's micro USB these days, but this still does use mini USB. It is very slow to transfer, I'm not going to lie. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's all right though, whatever. Not a big deal. Again, you get what you pay for, right? And again, I'm very impressed with it anyway for the price. Um, then, of course, we get the actual car adapter here. And uh, this one in particular is super duper long, which is what I love about this product here. This thing is like, I don't even know how long it really is, but it's it's incredibly long. I checked mine out today. That's why I'm, I'm pretty sure that it'll fit in the back of my car uh, from the front. Cause, I mean, I drive like, you know, like a sedan. I don't drive like an SUV or anything like that. So... Um, you know, this this should be plenty. Um, if not, I'm sure I'll find somewhere else to put it. I'm not that worried about it. So this is, once again, a super long 12-volt uh, car adapter to, uh, my, uh, I'm sorry, mini USB. And it is, look at that, that thing is massive. I'm not going to even bother uncoiling it right now. I'll just make a mess in this room. And then we have the suction cup, which this thing, guys, grips. Let me tell you something. The first time I had it on the car, I had to fight with it for like 10 minutes. I know that sounds silly, but I had to fight with it like 10 minutes trying to get it off the car. I think I might have to do with like 
either how cold it was outside that night or how hot. I'm not really too sure, but nonetheless, uh, I had a difficult time with it. It does have some protective film on it that you do want to remove prior to installing it on the car's windshield. Uh, and it does have like a little screw here that you can adjust. It lets it kind of slide back and forth to adjust it to how you need it for your situation. Um, and it does, once you do affix it to the windshield, you just twist this to a locking position and that's it. Unlock it by turning it the opposite direction and just pull it off. There's this little tab here, if you can get it to actually <laughs> come off. That's the trick there. And then the actual camera itself, guys, this thing is little. But let me tell you, again, it is just an incredible value. Pull it on out of here. Oh, and it also comes with um, this Sim Eject tool. At least that's what I'm calling it. I think it's actually used to take the SD card in and out because you have to really get your hand in there, and I was not able to do it. So I used this to get the SD card in there. And I haven't taken it out again since. I'm assuming that's what this is for because I cannot foresee any other reason why you'd need that for this camera. Um, yeah, so let me go and take it out of here. comes in this little wrapper. Slide it on out of there. And here it is. Like I said, guys, this thing is a great freaking thing. I just I can't get over how good it is for the price. Honestly. We're going to go ahead and peel off this film. Moment of silence. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, we got one on the front as well. Let me get that one off. All right, and that's off too. So let me go ahead and uh, take a seat here and I'll show you guys how this thing works and how to set it up. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the SD card. And I'll just show you guys kind of how I did it on my first camera by that little SIM tool that I showed you guys it comes with. So we're gonna take the camera and the SD card. Again, this is my 64 gigabyte one uh, that I showed you there that I just opened up. And we're just gonna go ahead and push that guy in there. And then it's nearly impossible to get it in by just pushing it. Like I said, I figured that out before. So we're just going to take the SIM tool. Be very careful with this. We don't want to slip. So let me just get a better grip here and uh, kind of focus on this. And that's it. It's in. It's installed in there. So that's perfect. So there's a couple different buttons on here. They're a little bit confusing at times uh, to use. Like you just have to really get used to it. I guess I'm not used to it yet. We got power here. We've got our lock button, which doesn't really do anything. Uh, the, the M button, which I guess is mode, and then an OK button. And then on this side, we've got the SD card slot, like you guys saw before. We've got like an up and down selector, and then a menu button. So we'll go ahead and press the power button and boot this little guy up, and then kind of show you guys how it works. So we'll hold that. You know, now I think about it, it, might not even have enough power. There we go, okay, I guess it's good enough for now. So that's it, it's on. It's ready to record, the microphone is on. I think if you press one of these up or down buttons, it actually disables it. I kind of learned that today, actually, with my main one. Yeah, there we go, that, that doesn't make it record audio, and that lets it record audio again. So right now it's on, and the way it's set up from the factory um, is it lets you basically, uh, like it, it takes three minute clips, it splits every clip up into three minutes. So like if you put them together, like in Premiere, or like iMovie, whatever you might use to edit videos, um, it'll become like one full clip. You could probably adjust the time, but I kind of like the three minute thing because it lets you like, you know, kind of get easier parts into like something you might, might want to see. Um, I've been playing around with this thing a lot. I love this thing, guys. So right now it's showing that there's no SD card in it. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see. It's got a little X on it. You might not be able to see it, unfortunately, just because of the way the lighting is. All right, there you can kind of see it. All right, so what we have to do is format the SD card. We're just going to press our menu button on the left side. Uh, Click, this is where it gets really confusing, guys. So you have to kind of use these arrow keys here. And this is a horrible display to look up on camera now that I'm looking at it. And this is how you scroll up and down, kind of, uh, like that. And then to move over to the next thing, I think I have to press the menu button one more time. Let me try that. Okay, and now we're in the menu button section kind of thing. So let's go ahead and go to format. There we go. So now we're going to press OK, which is again up here. I don't know why it's all over the place, but we're going to do that. So press Format, delete all the data, absolutely. Then it formats, and then now we're done. It's formatted, press the menu button again, and now we're back to the main menu. And now uh, if you could see the little X is gone, we now have an SD card that's ready to be recorded to. So it has a shock sensor in it. Uh, so they say, I've had some things be, re be recorded, like it shows a little key. Um, I guess like when you hit bumps, maybe sometimes you can adjust that in here. And I think this loop thing here lets you kind of pick how long you want it to last. Yeah, three minutes, so that's that there. Uh, let's go ahead and just get out of there. And we could change, I don't know what WDR is, let me look at that. I'm not really sure what that is. Probably have to look into the instructions for that. 
to really get an idea of what that is. We just have a bunch of things here, motion detection, audio recording, date stamp, G-sensor, so I definitely want to change the date and time on here. But I'll do that a little bit later since, you know, don't really, you guys probably don't really care to see that. But yeah, date and time is here. Actually, you know, I'll just show you guys real quick. So um, today in particular, it's, it's uh, what's today? November 8th, I think. So we'll just go ahead and pick that. It's pretty easy once you get used to using this little guy here. Um, once you get it set up, you probably won't really need to use it anymore. Um, I don't even remember what time it is right now, so we'll just leave that alone. Uh, all that stuff there. So it turns itself off, I guess you could set it to. That sound is really annoying, so I might turn it off in the future. Um, yeah, so let me show you guys how it records. When I first plug it into power on my car, um, it does start recording automatically, so I don't have to do anything. Uh, whenever I unplug it, I think it can turn itself off, but I typically just turn it off manually as I bring it in the house anyway, typically because I don't want to leave it outside. Um, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and try to get back to the, yeah, here we go. So the record button, I believe, is actually also the OK button. So yeah, now we're actually recording. As you guys can see, it's counting, it's recording, all that good stuff there. And so unless there's like a shock or something like that, the video will be in like a place where it could be overwritten once it comes to that time. So we'll go ahead and just kind of press the M button again, just to bring us to pictures, and then it'll bring us to our recorded stuff, which is this. So you press OK to play, it shows you down there how to do that. And then it'll just play that. As you can see, it's currently playing what I showed you guys. Um, so now if we, I, I see there's no key up here, which means this is going to be overwritten once it comes down to that. But let's say you really want to save this. Like something happened, you know, God forbid, and you know, you want to save it or you just want to save it because something cool happened, something funny happened, whatever. Um, you're going to go ahead and press the menu button again. And then it says delete or protect. You want to scroll to protect, press OK. And then you want to do lock current. If you just want to lock this one, press that and press the menu button again. And now we're back there, now there's a key up there. This is now locked, it will not get overwritten. At least that's my understanding of how this works. Um, so yeah, let me show you guys kind of how to get the suction cup on there real quick. It's it's keyed, it's slotted a certain way. It's lost something there. So I'll just go ahead and pop that on there. Not gonna lie, it's not the most secure fit, like at all really. It could probably come off, it comes off decently easy, but I haven't had it fall off in the car yet and I've probably done about I don't know, 2,000 miles on this. I took it with me on a road trip recently, um, and I haven't had it fall off the dash, I mean, off the windshield yet, so I'm going to say it's pretty good. And again, it's $40, guys, so, you know, don't expect the best thing. The picture quality isn't the best, 100%. You know, it's really not the best quality, but again, for the price you're paying, it's just, it, it's really awesome to have, honestly. So, guys, that's pretty much going to sum it up. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember to uh, like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks a lot.